tea The milkman, the paper boy, the evening TV and functional studies because this organism serves as a good model to the variation among all the different species. Previous studies have looked into the motion of lizards on stiff surfaces, but this study aimed to analyze lizard locomotion on water. The ability to run on water is limited in respects to size and the hydrodynamic drag on the foot once it's submerged in water. But to hear more about that, we're going to cue to our cutie Kaylin talking about our methods. All right, well this study, we used 30 basilisk lizards, each were measured for mass, snout length, tail length, leg length, and total mass ratio and center of mass. The lizards were then placed on a 4.6 meter track. And running speed was determined based on digitized recordings from eight landmarks painted on the body. The track was shortened to 1.5 meters for juvenile lizards. The runs must sp fit specific criteria in order to be considered proper bipedal running, also known as de rules. There had to be no breaks in motion, and the hands could not touch the water while they were running, among some other ones. <coughs> Go ahead. Stride analysis showed that lizards exhibited four distinct phases during stride. During this lap phase, lizards spread their toes on their left foot and plunged laterally and backwards into the water. The right foot is submerged in the water in the recovery phase. Arms are in phase with their respective foot, but out of phase with each other. This phase accounted for 19.3% of stride. During the stroke phase, lizards plantar effects <laughs> to flex their left foot and stroke through the water, sweeping medially. The right foot is removed from the water and completes the recovery up phase. This phase accounts for 17.5% of stride. During the recovery up phase, the left foot is in line with the long axis of the tibia, moving upwards and forwards out of the water. As the foot exits the water, the toes are pointed upward and the foot moves horizontally. The right foot simultaneously completes the slap and stroke stage as the left foot completes the recovery up phase. Arms and legs are out of phase. This phase accounts for half of the stride. During the recovery down phase, left foot moves down and medial in preparation for the slap phase. This phase accounts for 19.5% of stride. To recap our results, from stride analysis, we found that average velocity was 1.3 meters per second. A longer step length increased velocity. Also, increasing horizontal knee and ankle excursions increased stride length, which increased relative sprint velocity. The lizard's tail was submerged in the water during stride and had a forward velocity of 10.7% greater than body velocity. Lizards generated more thrust by increasing vertical and medial lateral foot stroke velocity during the slap and stroke phase. Foot velocity was the highest at recovery up phase and the lowest at the end of stroke phase. As the lizard's mass and length increased, total hind limb length and snout length decreased, making the body stout. Lizards weighing less than 8.9 grams exhibited an aerial run during the phase, unlike the rest. Heavier lizards had a smaller stride frequency but one had a longer duration of slap and stroke phase. They also entered the water heel first as compared to toe first for lizards less than 20 grams. The foot moved most rapidly during the slap downward and the recovery up upward phase. Ankle and knee ankles were under 90 degrees during the slap phase, suggesting that the leg was flexed for water contact. Knee and hip angles reached a maximum extension during the transition from stroke to recovery up phase. Foot drag was decreased by adducting the toes during recovery up phase. 
The function of the tail in lizard locomotion has been largely ignored in previous studies, yet the tail may play a major role as a counterbalance in basilisk lizards since it makes approximately 18% of its body mass. Basilisks drag their tails while they're running through the water. The mass of the fluid above the tail and the skin frictional drag of the fluid surrounding the tail could help keep the basilisk upright while they're running. Fun fact, basilisk lizards are native to the tropical rainforest of Central America, from Mexico all the way down to Panama. Breaking news, basilisk lizards have been spotted. Lindsay's on site. Here's to you, Lindsay. Thank you, Kaylin. Unfortunately, I can't see the lizards. They are just way too fast on land. So it appears that most of the kinematic variation between aquatic and terrestrial is due to size rather than speed. In fact, those on land run way faster than those in aquatic. And it's truly just the size that causes the difference. When running on water, basilisks only extend their ankle and knee joints during the slap and stroke phase. This suggests that unlike during land runs, the muscles and tendons in the basilisk legs no longer swole serve as a dual function for producing force and for storing elastic energy. Instead, they are used only to produce force. So the basilisk, or the Jesus Christ lizard, novel, it's running surface of water, and understanding its bipedal motion really gets to the heart of what we're getting at here. The locomotion is important to understand because we just understand this sort of smooth surface in labs so well, but in actuality, organisms really aren't running on smooth surfaces all the time. They're in the wild. There's rough terrain, and for them, wet terrain. And so, as we discovered, as counterintuitive as it might be, it's not so much the speed that gets them over the water. In fact, it is their stride length that is the biggest contributor. So I guess one could really say, size does matter. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? I repeat, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? We're gonna have a problem here. Y'all act like you never seen a white person before. Jaws all on the floor like Pam, like Tommy just bursting it. I should arrive